When trying to access social protection schemes, persons with disabilities may face a wide range of challenges related to design of those schemes. Issues can include eligibility criteria, conditionalities, and documentation required, among others. However, accessing well-designed schemes can have issues as well due to lack of accessibility in delivery mechanisms such as registration, enrollment, and payment. Persons with disabilities are a diverse group. Blind persons, deaf persons, wheelchair users, persons with intellectual disabilities, to name a few. They all face different barriers related to the built environment, transport, information and communication, etc. Removing these barriers is an obligation under the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities ratified by more than 180 countries. To better understand the barriers faced by persons with disabilities, it is important to consult with them and their representative organizations, OPDs. So, what are the main types of barriers that undermine access of persons with disabilities to social protection schemes? They can be classified in three categories – physical, information and communication, and attitudinal barriers. When trying to overcome these barriers, persons with disabilities are also faced with a variety of extra costs. First, let's take a look at information and communication barriers – general information, forms, websites, etc. are often not available in accessible formats for a variety of disabilities. In addition, information and procedures are often complex, which is challenging for some persons with disabilities, as well as people who are illiterate, innumerate, or financially illiterate. Some examples of how to make information and communication more accessible are easy read version of documents for persons with intellectual disability, simplified forms and processes that use simple rather than formalistic language, audio or electronic format for blind people, provision of sign language interpreters for deaf or deaf blind persons, self service terminals with voiceover, etc. Physical barriers include, for example, difficult terrain, lack of service points in the community leading to long travel distances to reach enrollment or payment centers, as well as inaccessible transport or complete lack of it, difficulty entering buildings and using self-service terminals, lack of accessible toilets, and so on. And finally, attitudinal barriers, which stem from prejudices and beliefs, can lead to discriminatory practices, lack of engagement by staff, and no consideration for inclusion requirements of persons with disabilities. This can be even more pronounced for groups such as women with disabilities and persons with intellectual or psychosocial disabilities, among others. Those barriers generate diversity of extra costs for persons with disabilities. They have to spend more on transportation and assistance with getting information and communicating with staff and using payment systems. If assistance is provided by a family member, that can lead to loss of income for them. Those barriers and costs are rarely addressed by design and delivery mechanisms of social protection systems. So, how do we overcome these obstacles? In order to address inclusion requirements of persons with disabilities, it is important to combine awareness raising, inclusive data collection, minimum standards, and engagement with organizations of persons with disabilities. To tackle the prejudice and misconception, the best route is by providing disability awareness training focusing on understanding the diversity and rights of persons with disabilities, as well as the barriers they face and the best way to address them. Delivered alongside gender equality training, this would help staff work on skills needed for developing inclusive delivery mechanisms. To increase attention, ensure that all data used for design, monitoring and evaluation allow for disaggregation by disability and gender. For that, the use of the Washington Group sets of questions is recommended. Data should also contribute to identifying potential barriers faced by persons with disabilities when accessing social protection schemes. Along with staff training and data disaggregation, minimum standards for accessibility and non-discrimination in operation manuals and tenders could go a long way in improving overall access. They should include overall accessibility requirements for diverse groups across delivery mechanisms.
They should also allow for necessary adaptations for individuals when accessibility is not yet provided or possible. These minimum standards should be incorporated in any contracts with private sector contractors, including payment providers. To allow OPDs to hold the system accountable, those standards should be made available and accessible, and programs themselves should publish annual public performance reports. Beyond accountability, OPDs have a role to play in making social protection schemes accessible by delivering awareness training and supporting the development of minimum standards that would consider the diversity of persons with disabilities. In addition, there are important steps to take to ensure that those standards are implemented throughout the administrative processes and the management systems. For communication, disability expertise may be contracted to advise on how to make communications accessible and develop an inclusive outreach strategy. Frontline staff should be trained to communicate with people with disabilities and sign language interpreters should be available to successfully communicate with deaf people. Finally, preferred means of communication of recipients should be recorded and always used in addition to any other standard formats. Streamlining and simplifying administrative processes is another important step. For those with high mobility issues or living in remote areas, it can be done by, for instance, providing registration and enrollment at the same time through home visits, including delivery of identity documents, opening a bank account, setting up a mobile phone account, etc. If enrollment needs to be undertaken separately to registration, ensure that mobility or communication difficulties of any recipient are taken into account and relevant adjustments made to the service to support their enrollment. All should be done to ensure that persons with disabilities themselves can easily receive the payment. This implies addressing possible discrimination faced when opening a bank account, ensuring accessibility of manned pay points and diverse electronic or mobile payment modes, and providing flexible options on where, when, and how to receive payment. In addition, training on how to access transfers as well as on financial literacy should be carried out, ideally in partnership with OPDs. And the final point we will talk about is complaints and appeals. To make them accessible, we have to establish multiple channels so that persons with different types of impairments have accessible forms of communication when putting forth a complaint. In conclusion, in order to ensure inclusive delivery of cash transfer schemes, accessibility and non-discrimination requirements should be incorporated throughout monitoring and reporting mechanisms, financial management systems, social accountability, operation manuals, payment systems, human resource management, evaluations and management information system, or MIS. Ensuring that persons with disabilities have access to social protection schemes is an obligation in most countries under the CRPD. While it requires certain investment, it contributes to greater inclusion that will also benefit many older persons, persons with limited literacy, and countless others.